There's no way. Do you know how many artists there are? Shh. Don't listen to her. You don't even have school for art. Buy some books. Buy some primary colors. Do you see how many books, how many colors, how many brushes there is? You will never master it. Just leave it and be fine with it. And some canvas. Try to have fun. Let your mind wander. Don't listen to her. You will never make it. Trust me, I know. You will get there. I hope you enjoyed that little sketch of mine. Would you believe me if I told you that only 20 minutes from now you will be ready to paint your first masterpiece? How, you may ask? Well, in this video we're gonna learn all the steps that you need. All the supplies, what to buy, what to read, how to start. If you're interested in this kind of content, then keep on watching. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. First question that comes to our mind is which brushes to buy. On the market there are basically two different types of brushes. You have these synthetic ones and you have these firm bristle ones. The difference between the two of them uh, depends on your taste. So what do you uh, plan to accomplish with your paintings? What kind of brush strokes do you like? Do you like more blended ones or do you like more stiff ones where you can really see the colors, the strokes, etc. As you can see, over the years I've collected a lot of brushes, all the sizes, shapes, etc. I would suggest in the very beginning to just invest in these few synthetic ones that are that have a straight line on top of it because you can really use them in a lot of ways. You can use them of course horizontally, vertically, etc. But if you twist your arm and use these corners of the brush, you can get a variety of strokes. Now we're gonna compare the two brushes. Synthetic one, you can barely hear it. Also, you can Bend it as much as you like. This one, here it is. And it's much more stiff than the previous one. Do you see how this one just glides? If you use corner, you can get all shapes that you want. Now we're gonna use color with the second brush. Do you see the difference? How this one is all blended and this one you can see basically every hair on the brush. If we take some oil So, like I said, the main difference is in your taste. I got this handbook on how to use and mix colors. You have everything. From learning you how to understand colors, how to easily mix primary colors. Third part is uh, color mixing. You have explanation about every possible colors. Firstly, we have yellows and it's really good explanation of how to mix, let's say, lemon yellow with uh, all different kinds of colors and what do we get by mixing it. The same thing we have for blue and purple colors, for greens, etc. Second book that I have and that I will highly, highly suggest for you to buy is this color mixing uh, recipes. What I like about this book is that you get this color mixing grid where you have parts of color and in the book itself you have explanation for each one of let's say if you want to mix skin tones you have exact recipes how much of each color should you put on this color um, grid let's say color one is white we're gonna use one part, color two is cadmium red, we're gonna use two parts, color three is ultramarine blue, we're gonna use three parts of that to get, let's say, this mixture. This skin tone recipes are really, really good and basically you have every possible tone that you can get. And also, we have a little 
uh, color theory on facial planes and color tones for mouth for ears, for nose. Uh, I will put a link in the description box of this book that I got. But you don't have to buy these exact colors. Uh, you can buy whatever you can find, either about colors or about drawing process it itself, uh, etc. Next thing that you have to have to paint with oil colors are solvents. I'm gonna show you what I typically use. In this little cute bottle I have two things this pinkish one is the solvent that I use to clean my brushes uh, I buy this at a local craft store this is just oil thinner I found that is the cheapest option that I can get for brush cleaning you can also use turpentine to clean your brushes but I typically uh, use turpentine just for the first layers of my painting because it's a lot uh, more expensive than the previous uh, one I kind of like to save money and use this on the paintings and the first one to clean the brushes this one is odorless turpentine and uh, I'm gonna show you later on how to use it on the canvas uh, as far as oil goes, uh, uh, I also found the cheapest linseed oil that I could get and I bought this container I think five years ago and I still have a lot of it here and here and in one more container. You really don't, you, uh, don't have to use a lot of linseed oil while painting. Basically, you need one solvent to clean your brushes, either a, a turpentine or this uh, thinner. You also need linseed oil and that's it for the very beginning. Now I'm gonna show you one more way how I try to save money on all my supplies. Uh, this is the thinner that I just show you and I have it in a lot of containers. This batch is some of the previous that I did. When I decide to clean all of these brushes, I put aside this container in order for the color to go on the bottom of the container, like in this one. Do you see how, how much dirt here it is? Uh, because you can reuse all of this. I just leave it like this for a few days uh, while the colors go down and then I take some other clean container and slowly 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 just gonna do it like this and pour it here do you see how the the colors now must all together but we're gonna leave it for now and here we have thinner that is basically clean and brand new and we can reuse it again the next question that comes in mind is what colors to buy you basically only need five primary colors we have titanium white black ultramarine blue cadmium red burnt umber cadmium yellow and yellow ochre what i would suggest for you to buy as well if you have budget are three more colors flash tint and dyke brown and earth green. Now we're gonna mix up some colors using only these primary colors in order for me to show you that you don't have to buy all the colors at the very beginning. It's better even for you to just work with these in order for you to get a hang of value, how to mix colors, etc. And later on as you progress you can of course buy yourself other colors. Let me know in the comments do you like this video so far? I almost always start by mixing darkest tones and colors and work my way to the light ones. I start by mixing some white, blue, ochre and a touch of cadmium red. If you want the colors to be more saturated, you add more blue. If you want it to be less saturated, you add more red, yellow, etc. This way we get one of the darkest tones. I always like to prepare as much colors and tones and then during the process of course I mix and match the premixes that I have. When my first color is done, I take almost everything and put it aside 
aside and then I continue to mix the rest on top of the first colors that I made. This way all of our colors will be cohesive in a way because we are using the same base for the next color and so on. Of course everything depends on the model that you're painting and the reference picture. Then I just continue to add more lighter colors and less darker and go shade by shade, always using the base of the previous color that I premixed. You should try to make as many colors as you can. Also try to relax hand when mixing and also have fun with it. If you mess up it's no big deal, just try again until you get there. The next question that comes in mind is on what surface can you possibly paint? You have basically four options. First option is for you to buy these canvas boards. They come in all different sizes and they are pretty inexpensive. Option number two is for you to buy yourself already finished canvases. Uh, they also come in different uh, sizes and with these ones they already are prepared and you can paint on them immediately but I will show you the process uh, how I do first layer with turpentine and color in order for the canvas to not suck up all the color. Option number three is for you to buy pieces of paper that have a linen finish on t on top of them and they are pretty good to paint with oil colors as well. The good thing about this is if you can cut it in two parts or fourth whatever you like and on one paper you can make two or three little paintings. And option number four is for you to make your own canvases. I made this one even though it's not 100% finished but no matter I will put a video next how I made this. It's pretty inexpensive, easy to do, I uh, use the cheapest materials that I can get and the cheapest option from all of them in my opinion and in my experience is to make your own canvases. Now it's time to make canvas. I buy fabric that is mix of cotton and lawn and I cut out how much I need. Use stapler and attach the fabric to the pattern. Tr uh, try to stretch it as much as you can because you don't want any wrinkles on your canvas. When you're done, cut out the excess fabric. Then I mix water and wood glue and use punch to evenly distribute. Do two coats of that. When it's dry I mix water and concrete color and do two coats of that. When everything is dry I use sandpaper to smooth it out and that's it. Easy and cheap way to make yourself canvas. So now I want to show you how to use turpentine. Most of the time I use this color called burnt umber and this odorless turpentine. I use this for the first layer of my painting. Uh, this combination dries really fast and you can put the next layer of color and uh, linseed oil uh, right away. The purpose of me doing this is for two reasons. First reason is for me to sketch the painting on the canvas and the second reason is when you do this the canvas doesn't suck up as much color as when you don't do it. So let's start. We're gonna use a tiny amount of color and tiny amount, amount of turpentine. With brush just take some 
color and some turpentine and can you see how basically we made from oil color almost like watercolor of course you can add more or less depends on your taste I always like to start with almost transparent layer to sketch the painting and then I make this darker mixture to add on the canvas the lighter parts and the darker parts of the painting The next question is on what to even mix colors on. I typically use two things. Firstly, I have this piece of glass and in my experience this has worked the best. It's easiest for me to clean it after I've done painting etc. I saw that some artists uh, like to paint the uh, side of the glass for them to easier see the colors that they put and mix on I haven't done it already but I am planning to do that the second option that I have are these pieces of plywood that I bought and they are pretty good as well as you can see they have a lot of colors already on them and it's not problem because when the colors get dry they won't get mixed with the next colors that you put on my advice when cleaning try of course clean as much as you can but if you cannot clean the cl colors that is not a problem just try to make the surface while the colors are still fairly wet try to make the, the surface as smooth as you can possibly do in order for me to do that I use this and when the colors are here I just as you can see some of the older colors can be cleaned as well even though painting with oil colors is a lot of fun and for some people it's hobby for some people it's their business and their livelihood there are some things that are maybe not so fun basically we have some rules that we have to follow in order for our paintings to be done properly uh, we have three rules first one is fat over lean second one thick over thin and third one is slow drying over fast drying what does that mean on the first layer we can put turpentine and a tiny bit of color and that is fine that will dry up really fast and that is basically a really really th thick layer of color the next layer of our painting should be colors the third layer should be colors mixed with linseed oil if you want to put the fourth layer to glaze the colors you will uh, mix more of a linseed oil and a tiny amount of colors and that's it 20 minutes are gone now you are ready to paint your first painting let me know in the comments below was this video helpful and which part the most i would love it if you would leave me a comment if, if i helped you to paint your first masterpiece and i will see you in the next one bye